Good morning, church. Oh, you sound awake. You sound alive this morning. We are so glad you're here. If you're new, we're especially glad you're here. We welcome you. Let's stand as we sing and worship this morning. I know you know this one, so I'm expecting a nice, good, hey, ho. Oh, here we go. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room. Where people pray, where we hear praises, he hears faith. Let's sing it again. There's a sound we'd love to hear. We welcome you here this morning, God. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room. Where people pray, where we hear worship, he hears me. Ah, have your way in this place this morning. Sing, awake my soul. Good morning, church. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. See a lot of faces we haven't seen. It's an amazing opportunity to get together, and we're really excited and want to build momentum as we travel towards Easter. And this morning, there's going to be a lot of announcements about Easter and beyond, and John's going to talk about, some, Pastor John's going to talk about some of that in his sermon this morning. I wanted to, uh, what do I want to do next? It's all in, it's all in my back pocket. 
So I wanted to uh, remind everybody that this morning we're going to have a Cross Point Connect lunch immediately following this. Nice. And we're having chili and soup, and I'm excited about that. And I want you all to be there, and it's another opportunity for us to connect. And as well, this morning, I wanted to talk about our 915 prayer time. This morning, we started gathering in the uh, hallway out there, a big group, and we were praying for each other, praying for our church and our community. Yes, we were. And we want to see more people there to join in that. It was a great opportunity, and it was, it was a good way to start this morning. So we're going to be doing that every Sunday at 915, and you're welcome to join us there. If you're new, if this is your first Sunday here, we want to welcome you this morning, and we want to connect with you. On the screen behind me, you'll see the online, there's a QR code. You can do, fill out our online connect card, or even better, you can meet us at the hello desk outside. We have a gift for you, and we want to get to know you better and make that connection. On top of that, we have chili and soup today. So you guys can come and meet some people and see what we're all about here at Cross Point Church. I want to talk about giving this morning. There's a, if, if you call Cross Point your home and you want to support the ongoing ministries here, there are a number of ways to give. There's boxes at the back for cash or check. There's a debit machine out in the hall. And as well, you can do e-transfer at give at crosspointchurch.ca. There's also an excellent opportunity. We've been asked to help a community member this morning. And this is a special designation. And if you want to come alongside us and give to that, you can give to, uh, you can designate that specifically to outreach, family in need. So I just want to give you that opportunity this morning. I also want to bring up on April the 2nd at 6 p.m., we've asked Pastor Anthony Moore from King's Church to come and speak to us. And that is going to be about hearing God. And I'm excited about that. I'm going to be there. And everyone is welcome. It's going to be a good opportunity to hear, uh, to learn how we can hear God and recognize his voice in our lives. And I really want to give you that opportunity this morning. So again, that's April 2nd at 6 p.m. here at the church. Now, before we get back to worship, let me pray with you as we prepare our hearts. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this great opportunity to come and worship you. Prepare our hearts this morning as we... Lift your name high. May your will be done in this church as it is in heaven. In Christ's name, amen. Let's stand together as we make this song of prayer this morning. You are breaking. 
it white as snow. He washed it white as snow. He washed it white as snow. He washed it white as snow. Amen. You may be seated for a moment. Isn't it good to be together today? We're singing about that message of forgiveness by the one who embodied forgiveness. And so we're going to take time to remember that today. And so I'm going to invite you in just a moment to come forward to the communion table. And uh, because there's so many of us here, this is a good problem. We're going to go kind of section by section. And so I'm going to invite this section over here and, and maybe, especially as we get to a few more people, maybe as, as the, the front few rows start to come, you can kind of come on the inside and then work your way out by the window side. And then I'll dismiss the center section. And then last but not least, you guys too can come forward. And so we're going to get to take part in this in a moment. So would you come? center section, I'll invite you to come forward at this time. Last but not least, please come forward.
many of us had the opportunity to pray with one another out in the lobby at 9.15, and we started by hearing the good news, hearing how God's already answered prayer, hearing what he's up to, and and it took a while to hear from everyone. It was, it was good to hear. And then we took time to hear requests of all different sizes, and we prayed with one another. And I already had the privilege for, for some that were just on the stage and, and some that are serving our, our kids downstairs right now. I already had the opportunity to lead them in communion so that they wouldn't miss out on this moment. And so even at home, we encourage you to join us right now with whatever you have. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, where the Apostle Paul, he shares that, for I pass on to you what I receive from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink it. Father, we thank you for this, this time which we just got to remember in song and then in this tangible sacrament to remember what you've already done for us. We receive it now. As we can still taste this, let that be an ongoing memory of what you've done for us. As we were just singing to pay our debt but also to raise us to life. So we thank you at this time that we get to share in this message of forgiveness, but also that you've given us an example to, to go and walk in that, to embody that message of forgiveness. And so we don't just remember what you've done, but we go out as a people sent by you to forgive one another as you've forgiven us. Thank you for this time that we've got to worship you in this one place and, and for our kids who are worshiping you in their own way and, and learning about you. We offer up the rest of this service to you. We already, we have felt your presence. We've recognized your presence. And so now as we get ready to, to hear from your word, would you change us? We're asking you to make new wine out of us. And so would you move in a special way today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome, everyone. So good to see you today. I don't know if you count down the way that you count down for Christmas, but it is 28 sleeps until Easter. <laughs> I don't know if we have calendars for that. Kind of defeats the point of Lent. You can't have chocolates in there. I know some of you, it's, it's painfully uh, obvious that like people tempt you. They bring sweets to your house even. I don't know if I'm speaking to anyone in particular, but like there's, there's people that have given something up for Lent. A year ago for Lent, I gave something up. It's, it's not sweets. It's, it's more of a... Uh, toxic's too strong of a word, but I gave up Facebook a year ago, and I haven't missed it since. And so that's been great. I don't know if any of you have given something up for Lent. <laughs> you don't have to clap for me. You can clap for getting rid of Facebook. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, this year, what did I, what did I give up? PS5. PS5, yeah. No gaming. No gaming for me. 
I'll have to wait to win the World Cup uh, after Easter again in, in FIFA. Uh, my thumbs don't hurt. Uh, it's pretty good, actually. Um, but we've, many of us have taken something up for this season of Lent. Many of us have been uh, reading Scripture. And, and so um, we're going to talk about that in a moment. But as we're kind of uh, inching toward Easter, we're, we're actually intentionally trying to build momentum. And do you feel it today? There's some things that God has been doing even since January 1, and, and we've witnessed it, and, and we've seen um, great things even behind the scenes, but, but even up to and including baptism in the tank, which is behind uh, some of the stuff on stage here now. And so uh, large and small, uh, when people have taken a, a next step or a first step, uh, we considered that a starting line in their faith journey. It's, it's, it's a new one anyway. Uh, and so whether it's coming to Jesus for the first time or, or being obedient to him in whatever he's prompting you to, uh, many have said, you know, I want to trust God with my finances, and so here I go. And some of those things are in private, so you don't get to, to really hear about them. Others, it's, it's been forgiveness. It's been, I've been holding on to this, and I want to let it go. And, and there's just a number of things that we're looking forward to. And so as we're kind of building momentum here, isn't this cool that it's the end of March break and here we are in, in this one room and, uh, and, it, and it feels good. And so leading up to Easter, uh, up to and including Palm Sunday, which is April the 2nd, we're going to be in this one service at 10 a.m. And then Holy Week, Good Friday. I, I always love that day. I always love the reflective nature of a service that we have like that where we get to reflect on often the, the last moments in the, in the last uh, even words uh, of, of Jesus before he, he breathed his last, leading up to what we call Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday. And so at 10 a.m. that morning, it'll be just in person and, and all in, in one room, uh, but that'll be our next opportunity to take part in communion as we just did today. And so Good Friday, uh, that will be a reflective style service, a really meaningful one. And so we encourage you to come out and kind of start that, that weekend uh, with us here at 10 a.m. And then I'm really excited. I'm going to be a part of it, too. On Saturday morning, we're going to have a CP Kids event. And so Easter egg hunt, anyone? Uh, I think we have a 1,000. We have at least like a 1,000 eggs of all different colors. And I think the colors are going to be associated with different age levels. And so some of them are going to be in more difficult uh, spots. But there's going to be tons of different games and, and activities and, and I'm sure food and, and things like that. And there's even a golden egg, isn't there? There's like this one golden egg, which will probably be a better prize. And so, I don't know, parents, maybe you want to sneak in and, and uh, forge your age a little bit. We won't judge. Um, you might have to shave, some of you, but uh, you might want to get in on that. It's going to be fun that weekend. And then Easter Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday. Well, we're not going to be in one service because we shouldn't be able to, to fit. I know today, uh, many of us are parked down on the street here. Some of you, thank you. Those of you that showed up early, parked far away, we're trying to allow space for as many people as possible. Uh, but we're going to have two services that morning at 9 and at 11. And, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to open up the tank and we're going to fill it with water. We're going to make sure that it's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And, and we're going to be ready for baptisms. And so uh, if someone even here in this room now or online, if you haven't been baptized but you've begun following Jesus, I think it's time to get baptized. And so you can let us know sooner than later. But even that morning, as we've been doing the last few offerings, where um, back in the fall, we, we had some, one of our CP kids come upstairs uh, during the earlier service, and, and we, we baptized them at the end of the service. And then I just waited to see if there was anyone else that was ready to get dunked. Um, there wasn't that day. And so in the 11 a.m., we, we didn't have a, a baptism. And, and the same thing at the end of January when we baptized George at the end of that 9 a.m. service. We were waiting. I, I get back in the tank even if uh, someone isn't coming forward just in case. I want to make it as easy as possible. Not twisting your arm, but we do have extra flip-flops. We do have towels and things like that. So you will get wet, but that's okay. Uh, but if that's your, your next step in your faith journey, we want to make it really easy. And and so that whole weekend, but especially that morning, is all about life change. And so what better way to celebrate than op offering that opportunity? So you're going to be inviting people. I know you will be. And that's a great weekend to figure out which service are you coming to, the 9 or the 11, and then invite someone. Uh, bring them. You don't have to drag them. Please don't do that. But you can, you can bring them uh, and, and drive them here and, and show up and be ready. 
be ready for them to hear the gospel, be ready for them uh, to, to hear the word of God and, and to have that challenge to, to even come forward and, and even go up and uh, get baptized. So please be praying for that. Uh, there's so much more that we're going to share in the coming weeks, but one thing that's going to happen after Easter, also part of the inviting that you're going to be doing in the next four weeks, um, we're going to offer Alpha right after Easter. And some of you have been a part of that before. Some of you have no idea what that means. And so let's watch this video. Life moves fast, doesn't it? Every day there is so much to fit in. Do you ever stop and think? What's the point of it all? Do you ever ask yourself, is there more to life than this? Alpha is a series of sessions exploring life, faith, and meaning. It's a space to explore the big questions, to say what you think and hear other people's points of view. First up, there's food, then a talk, followed by a discussion. Each talk explores a different aspect of the Christian faith. And then in the small group, you get to say exactly what you think. The aim of the talk is to spark conversation, each week unpacking a different question. There's no obligation to say anything, and there's nothing you can't say. Seriously. It's an opportunity to hear from others and contribute your own perspective in an honest, friendly and open environment. Why not try it out? So that's a little bit about Alpha and you'll hear more in the coming weekends, uh, but it's going to be 11 weeks long. Wednesdays at 6 p.m. from April 19th until the 28th. There's going to actually be a full day opportunity uh, from 9 to 4 on Saturday, June the 3rd. And this is an opportunity for us to explore the Christian faith, to invite uh, friends, even family members to hear the gospel, but really to explore a relationship with Jesus. And so uh, the way that it, it often works best is that there's a meal to start uh, because obviously uh, this is one way that we get to gather, but when you offer food and you can sit around a table with someone else, it's really easy to uh, kind of break down walls and get to share with one another. Then there would be a, a talk, often in a video form, uh, sometimes even worship, but then the discussion is, is a highlight uh, where people get to ask questions and, and there's a, a guide for us to go through. And so here are the three things that we want you to consider today uh, as you get ready to prepare for this with us. Uh, we want you to invite people. We want you to be thinking of, uh, who's that one person that I, I would, if I had the opportunity, invite them to something just like this? Uh, the other thing is that we're going to need some of you to volunteer. Actually, many of you, what an opportunity to, to step up and we can do this uh, for a short season um, and, and really reap the benefits. And then last but not least, we want you to pray. And so be praying for the people that are going to show up. Be praying uh, for who maybe you want to invite. And uh, there's more to come in, in the weeks to come, uh, but we're going to do Alpha. And so let's be inviting people as we go. And so I shared how I gave something up, and many of you have done that, but many of us have also uh, taken something up. Uh, many of you downloaded the YouVersion Bible app. I, I helped a few of you with that, too. There's many of us on there now. Some of you have taken paper plans to go through the reading. I've been on the phone with a few people, too, uh, who are, are eager to do this. And so we started on Ash Wednesday, and uh, many of you uh, started that day, or some of you even, I heard a few keeners started uh, days before that, and you found that there's even this, this kind of play button, and you can, you can hear, uh, depending on the translation, an audio version, and so someone else can actually read for you, and you can listen. Uh, some of you ha have started uh, that next Sunday or last Sunday. Uh, some of you can start even today, and so it's not too late to start. But one of my favorite parts about it is that on those of us that, that started on that, that first uh, day uh, to start this season of Lent, 
on Fridays and on Saturdays, we're reading from the Gospel of Mark. And so what we've been doing is, is we've been reading that on Friday and, and Saturday. And then Sunday, there's not a reading because we're coming in to, to read together, but we're reflecting on what we have just read on either Friday and or Saturday. And so even if you're hearing this for the first time, that's okay because we're going to read um, this, this particular passage. And so you can hear it many for the first time, uh, but even more of you can, can hear it again. And so we're, we're praying that God's opening up our ears to, to hear this as we reflect on the Word of God. So we're in chapter 5 of Mark, and we're going to start in verse 21. Jesus got into the boat again, and he went back to the other side of the lake, where a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. Then a leader of the local synagogue, whose name was Jairus, arrived. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. Pleading fervently with him, my little daughter is dying, he said. Please come and lay your hands on her. Heal her so she can live. Jesus went with him, and all the people followed, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact... She had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus. So she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately, the bleeding stopped. She could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what happened to her, came and fell on her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. Some translations say she told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. While he was still speaking to her, messengers arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. They told him, your daughter is dead. There's no use troubling the teacher now. But Jesus overheard. He overheard them and said to Jairus, don't be afraid. Just have faith. Then Jesus stopped the crowd And wouldn't let anyone go with him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw much commotion and weeping and wailing. He went inside and asked, why all this commotion and weeping? The child isn't dead. She's only asleep. The crowd laughed at him, but he made them all leave, and he took the girl's father and mother and the three disciples into the room where the girl was lying. Holding her hand, he said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And the girl who was 12 years old immediately stood up and walked around. They were overwhelmed and totally amazed. Jesus gave them strict orders not to tell anyone what had happened. And then he told them to give her something to eat. Father, we thank you for the reading that we've been going through and and to to hear this gospel account. We've already heard of the wonderful things you've done and from teaching to to miracles and, and healing and we're realizing that you have authority over sickness. You have authority over diseases of all kinds. You have authority over the Sabbath. Even spirits listen to you. Father, we're seeing here that you even have authority over death. We're believing you are the author of life. And so as we're opening up to to hear your word and and hear what it is you have for for us today, we've already recognized your presence is here and we're asking for you to illuminate this to us, for you to help us to understand. May your Holy Spirit guide us in this. May we believe in faith what it is 
uh, you want us to do in action. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the context of this passage, chapter 5, those of us that were reading it just on Friday would see that there was actually a, a pretty incredible scene that happened just before that. And uh, as I was reflecting earlier this week, I, I wasn't sure where I was going to land. And, and quite often I'll talk to Blair on a, on a Monday, sometimes earlier than that, and, and sometimes as late as a Tuesday to say, I think we're going this way. And as I was looking... The easiest way that I could describe to you why I felt like this was the passage is that it was the one I feared the, the most. It was the one that I thought, I don't, I don't want to teach that one. Okay, I guess that's the one we're going with. And so it's a little bit of a different day, uh, but just sometimes I like to know the backstory on why did they choose this over that. And so just so you can have some insight, uh, I wanted to lean into the one that I was a little bit apprehensive of. And so uh, today, you've already heard, it's a connect lunch right afterward. We're having soup and chili and things like that. Um, and there are buns, rolls, things like that. But what you've already heard is that there's a sandwich. And so we're going to kind of chew on a sandwich here that Mark has for us. Uh, Mark, in, in a few different spots throughout his gospel, maybe you, you notice this, is that sometimes there's either a teaching... And then even last week, uh, where Jesus, he was sharing the parable of the sower before he explained it. And then there was this middle section that was almost like the key to understanding the whole thing. And then what happened next was his disciples and a few others wanted to hear, uh, what does this actually mean? And then he went through the explanation. So some could call that a Mark sandwich. Well, this right here, there's this guy who... Uh, he's, he's, he's fearing for his, his daughter's life, and he's coming as he sees Jesus. Jesus is back where he's healed many people before, and he's taught wonderful things. Well, he doesn't have anything else to, to do but to fall at the feet of Jesus and just pray, if, if you come and lay your hands on my daughter, she will be well. And so what happens is Jesus goes along uh, with him, as, as most of the crowd does, but then all of a sudden, there's this other character, and right in the middle, kind of sandwiched in, is this woman who has been suffering, and we're already seeing these parallels. How many years has she been suffering? 12 years. And then later, when you get back to uh, Jairus and, and his daughter, and really that whole family and that community as they're, they're mourning the loss of this daughter, you realize that she's 12 years old. Interesting how that's included. Well, what does it even mean Jesus got into the boat and went back to the other side? Well, even last week when we were looking at different uh, parables and understanding the first one would help us understand the rest, uh, what we skipped over, but what we read is that Jesus, he had calmed this storm. He was going from one side of the sea to the other. And it was incredible when some think that uh, what was happening there with, with nature also kind of connected with the opposition that he would find spiritually as, as he got to this area where there's this man who he's demon-possessed and, and he's kind of shunned, and that's a whole story for another day. Uh, but, but Jesus, after he had uh, freed this man, um, somehow he's all of a sudden fully clothed. We're not sure where the clothes came from, but, but here he is. He's, he's fully clothed. He wants to go with Jesus but Jesus says, no, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. And so the man, he started off visiting the 10 towns of that region and began to proclaim the great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed at what he told them. And, and Jesus felt it was time to go back to the other side of the lake again. And so that's where we pick things up. And so the large crowd that's around there if you read chapter 6 this last week, uh, you might notice there's a couple things that happened uh, uh, in the story about Jesus feeding the 5,000. Jesus, he, he saw this huge crowd and he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. And I love at the very end of the chapter, the end of our reading just yesterday, it says that after he crossed the lake uh, and they landed there, it's saying that wherever he went in villages, cities, or the countryside, they brought the sick out from the marketplaces. They begged him to let the sick 
touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched him were healed. Perhaps this story spread quickly. This woman who thought to herself, if I can just reach out, if I can just touch his robe, I'll be healed. I don't want to inconvenience the teacher. He's busy. But if I only just touch him, and so this story must have got out. We don't know a lot about Jairus, but we've, we've noticed that for some reason for Mark and, and for other writers too, um, they're selective about the names they include. Uh, sometimes there's only little detail. You don't know the, the name uh, of the woman, but you know the name of this local synagogue leader, perhaps because of those who lived in that area. And, and what this means is he was the leader. He wouldn't have been a rabbi, but he would have been responsible for the worship and everything that went on in that, in that synagogue. Sometimes there were a few of them, but in this case, it might just be him. He would have been responsible for getting speakers and, and things like that, and he would have been highly respected. We're not sure if he's a Pharisee or not, but either way, even if there was kind of tension uh, between um, people that, that he respected and respected him and and along with Jesus, he, he wasn't worried about that in this case. His daughter was more important than anything that could get behind uh, views and opinions. And so when he saw Jesus, I think it's important that he got to see Jesus. What did he do? He fell at his feet. And there's a long uh, line of us. But in this picture, Jesus actually beside him. Not in front of him, not behind, but beside him. Jesus went with him. I think it's important for us to think about that. If, if we've had this tension of, John, you've been talking about following Jesus, but I just need to know that he's with me. And here, Jairus gets to experience Jesus going with him. But all of a sudden, this woman who had been suffering for 12 years, it says that she had suffered a great deal from many doctors she had spent everything she had. Some would say that uh, although she was bleeding, she was also bled dry financially. Others would say that she was suffering from her disease, but also from the cures. Often people at this time, uh, they didn't have medicine exactly like today. Uh, there were definitely place placebos, and, and they do work, right, sometimes. Um, but more than that, there was a lot of superstition, and so we're not sure exactly if, if she thought, if, if I can just touch this, this great teacher who's healed people, if I just do that, is it a superstitious thought? I, I don't think that matters so much, but she would have tried things. She would have tried everything to be able to be well, but instead of getting even marginally better, she had gotten worse. So the physicians weren't much help to her, but she's finding out that she's about to encounter the great physician. So Jairus, he saw Jesus. Well, this woman, she had heard about Jesus. And so the word has spread, and so she shows up. And remember what she was thinking to herself. And so as she reaches out in this crowd that's pressing around Jesus, she does. She, she gets to touch his robe, and immediately, immediately the bleeding stopped. And she could feel it in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Maybe you have something in your life, even a small thing, uh, maybe it's a habit, uh, maybe it's uh, the, the crack of a can of your favorite drink, and when you're craving it, the moment that you crack that and hear the sound, you're like, I already feel better. And then before that first sip, you're just anticipating, right? For me, when I need a coffee, it's too late. But maybe you've noticed that when you walk into a cafe and you can smell that aroma, if that's what you're into, then you're like, I already feel better. I'm, I'm awake now. Uh, for me, it's when I start the, the ritual, the routine of getting everything ready, when I weigh the beans, I'm already smelling these whole beans. Uh, just when the bag opens, actually, I can smell it. But then when I, yeah, amen. And then when I, I put it in the grinder and I start to grind, the moment that that begins and I do it by hand, I already feel like the caffeine has hit me. But I know scientifically that it takes at least 40 minutes for it to hit my bloodstream. Doesn't matter. The moment that I even begin the process, I feel like it's already working. But here, that's not what's going on. It's not just psychological. She immediately was healed. She didn't have to wait 40 minutes. She didn't have to wait another 12 years. She immediately was healed of this terrible condition. 
And this is maybe a conversation uh, for those with PhDs, but verse 30 begins with Jesus realized. Jesus realized, and at once he realized that healing power had gone out from him, so he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? Now, think about it. Have you been in line recently for anything, or, or have you been in a crowd? Do you remember crowds? This is sort of one. Um, you're waiting in line, and, and, and I mean, you're trying not to bump into people, but naturally people bump into you. When the disciples kind of look, and, and, and they're kind of laughing, they're, they're sort of scoffing at him, saying, look at this crowd pressing around you. How could you ask who touched me? Uh, some think that the, the word for crowd pressing around, like that, that kind of concept was almost like a deadlock. So imagine like rush hour uh, traffic gridlock. Um, imagine when there, there's, there's nowhere to really go. Somehow this woman was able to, to, to weave in and, and touch his robe, but, but how would he have noticed that? We're gonna see that it's because of faith. He kept on looking around to see who had done it. Maybe he knew, but either way, he's, he's kind of scanning the crowd to see what she's going to do. And then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, she came, fell on her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And so Jairus, he falls on, on his knees for one reason, and this woman falls after she's already healed, but she falls and he, she tells him, what she had done. She tells him the whole truth. So maybe she's saying, well, I, I just thought, you know, I, I'd been suffering and, and I'd heard about you. And so if I, had, if I just, if I just touch you, I didn't want to bother you. I'm sorry to stop you. I know you're, you're very busy, but if I could just touch your robe, I'd be healed. And I, I felt it immediately. And, and Jesus is pointing this out. Think of it this way. We're, we're trying to interpret what we're reading. Well, in this moment, Jesus is interpreting her experience. Jesus tells her, just to make sure that it, it has nothing to do with superstition or, or some other physician, but he says to her daughter, we don't know her age, but he says to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. It's already happened, but now he's declaring this happened. It's actually because of your faith. So imagine Jesus is, is talking to her. She's on her knees, and Jesus is, is paying attention and then speaking to her at that same moment, the sandwich continues, and, and over here, Jairus is just waiting, and he's like, Jesus, could we pick this up? But at that moment, messengers arrive from the home of Jairus. They told him, your daughter's dead. There's no use troubling the teacher now. And Jesus, he overheard this, so he's over here finishing up encouraging this woman in her faith. And over here, Jairus is getting the worst news he's ever heard. He was expecting it, but he thought that maybe Jesus could get there before this would happen. And if you think of this, verse 36 says, but Jesus overheard, there's an asterisk in my Bible, and at the bottom it says, or ignored. Overheard could mean a few things. In, in our day and age, it could mean you heard something that someone else was saying that wasn't meant for you. It could also mean, in, in this case, or ignored, that he's actually hearing something that either isn't true or he wants to discount the truth of. And so Jesus, he's, he's ignoring what, what's being said over here, and then he says to Jairus, don't be afraid, just have faith. The beautiful thing about this is that the woman was actually the illustration of the point. You know what she just did? She did this out of faith. She's been suffering the entire age of your daughter. And now in faith, she's healed. She's, she's gonna go here in, in peace. She's a changed person. She can feel it immediately. What she did, could you do that? Could you hold on to that for a moment? Let's keep w walking. And so Jesus, he stops the crowd, the ones that were pressing all around him. He stopped them. He wouldn't let them go on except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Why that's mentioned is probably because as Mark was giving this account, it's highlighting to those who would have first listened to this that James, he was just martyred for his faith. 
maybe pointing out that yeah, he's not with us anymore, but because he upheld the faith. And so that's a, a point that perhaps Mark is making for us. And when they came to the home of this synagogue leader, Jairus, right, Jesus saw much commotion and weeping and wailing. So there had been enough time in, in this day and age, in this culture, they would hire people for the, even for the prep of a funeral, they would hire, there'd be someone playing a flute. I don't know if I want that, not that I have any say, but please don't have a flute player at my funeral. <laughs> Weeping and wailing is, is a must. Um, I'm going to put that in. I don't know how much you have to pay for that, but people probably already got their, their paychecks. Uh, they're, they're, they're weeping. There, there's both the real authentic weeping and wailing for those that would have known this family, would have known the daughter, but then the extras who are there to help and, and when someone else if you've ever been so tired that you can't cry anymore, someone else is there to kind of cry for you on your behalf and to kind of honor and, and remember this, this loved one. But when Jesus went inside the home and there's people crowded around again, why all this commotion and weeping? The child isn't dead. She's only asleep. And once again, Jesus is interpreting the experience and so I want you to listen closely for those of you that you, you have faith in Jesus, you've been following him, you trust not just in his death, in his burial, in his, but also in his resurrection, that actually we one day will hear his voice and even after we've died, we will be raised. Do you believe that today? It's as though for those of us that already trust in Jesus, death is only sleep because he's going to wake us back up. It's a real thing, and it's painful, but it's just like we're sleeping. He's redefining it, and he's interpreting the experience of this girl and for the family. But the crowd, they're not ready to receive this for obvious reasons, and, and it says the crowd, they laughed at him, but he made them all leave. He took the girl's father and mother and the three disciples that was Peter, James, and John, took them into the room where the girl was lying. So he's even deeper into the home now, and everyone else, they might still be able to hear them in the outer room and maybe even outdoors, but he's in the room where the girl is lying, and, and perhaps they've already begun this process. But I love this. Holding her hand, remember Jairus said, if you can just come and, and lay your hands on her, she'll be made well, she will live. Well, Jesus, he carefully takes her hand, and then he speaks. We know that even at, at his word, he has the authority to bring dead things back to life, but he Amen. takes the time to take her hand, and he said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. We've heard this before, that it's almost like a parent or a loved one coming into a child and saying, honey, it's time to get up. Don't be late for school. And Jesus speaks this, and, and is it at the touch, or is it at the voice, or is it a combination of both? Either way, when Jesus speaks, what happens? At the little girl who's 12 years old, immediately, not 40 minutes later, not 12 years later, immediately she stood up and walked around. She's not just kind of alive. You know how kids are. She's up. She's ready. I thought about this this week, and I was... I, I think sharing with, uh, with Blair and Stephen um, of an experience where I was literally asleep, not, not dead, but uh, I've talked about my grandparents a lot. You talk about what you know and, and who you love. Uh, my grandfather, the real John Sherwood, um, he was a voice in my life that when he said something, which wasn't often, but when he said it, I was listening. I can remember even as an adult uh, being in the room that they had for me at, at his home. And he could be on the other side of a closed door, but if he, in the early morning, said my full name, which I will not utter in this time, uh, but what, when he would say my full name, I was already up and pants were on, and I was like, yeah, I'm up, I'm, I'm good to go, I'm not gonna be late, uh, because he had that kind of authority in his voice. I respected him so much that when he even just said my name, I was awake. There's a few people in my life <clears throat> that would be like this, H.C. Wilson. <laughs> He's someone that if he said my full name, I, I would be up. Whatever I did wrong, uh, I'm, I'm, actually, I might be on my knees, I don't, I don't know, but there's, there's a few people 
that when they speak because you love them and you respect them so dearly, my grandfather, he just had to say my full name and I was at attention. I could have been in a deep sleep. I don't know, but I was up. This is a little bit different, but when Jesus, she says, he says to this girl, little girl, get up immediately. She's perhaps as though I'm I'm dressed, I'm ready. We're like, am I late for school? Like, let's go. And everyone that's around at this moment, they were overwhelmed and totally amazed, as you would be. Um, Can we get a refund on uh, the weepers and the wailers and especially the the flautists? Can we please get a refund on that? I don't know how that works. Lawyers, can you you check into that? Jesus gave them strict orders not to tell anyone what had happened. And then he told them to give her something to eat. Hard to say how long she was sick and if she had had anything to eat even that week. Maybe it just kept getting worse and Jesus is, is nowhere to be found. He's on the other side of the lake and so crowds were waiting and, and perhaps the reason the crowds were waiting is they had heard even the times that Jesus said, don't tell anyone. Perhaps they're like, I can't not tell people the great things that Jesus has done. Did, did you see what he did? Did you hear? Word travels fast. And so they were waiting. And so when he got back to that other side of the lake, the crowd is around and and they're like, Jairus, go get him. And so he comes and when he sees Jesus, he doesn't know that it's going to end this way. But he was trusting. He was hoping. He was in faith believing that this was possible. One author says that this whole section should be called faith that defies defeat. Have you been there? So we're getting ready for Easter, and it's all about resurrection. It's about life change. We're going to, we're going to be ready to baptize someone. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's someone you're going to invite in the next few weeks. Maybe it's someone that you're praying about now to invite to Alpha. Whoever it is, uh, I'm going to be ready to go in the tank. And I'm going to have an assistant ready to go in the tank. Whether someone signed up or not, we're going to be ready. But isn't that a symbol of someone who, as Jesus has interpreted, those that are in faith, death is, is just like sleeping. And so... When we're baptized and we go under the water, that's, that's our Good Friday. That's being dead and buried with Jesus. But we don't hold someone under there so long that they actually die. We bring them up out of the water, and what does that represent? Resurrection, new life. In that moment, something has already happened in your heart, but you're physically representing that this is what's, what's true. This is, this is what I believe in faith. I'm I'm showing people publicly in this moment, but I'm believing that, yeah, I might die. If Jesus doesn't return in my lifetime, then I will die. But to him, I'm believing that it's just like sleep. One day he's going to call me by my full name, my real name, (laughs) and I'm going to wake up. I'm going to be walking around. I don't want to be late for school. Could you hold on to that faith? We're believing that today. Father, we thank you so much for your message and how you've embodied forgiveness. We thank you that you've freed us of any debt, but more importantly, perhaps, that you've freed us from death, even the fear of it at this time. And so we're we're trusting and we're in, in faith holding on that in the same way that we had an experience here of just reflecting on your word and an encounter that a few people had with you that at your touch, at your word, at your authoritative word, you you speak life into things that seem to be dead. And so at this moment, I know you're stirring many of our hearts and we want to give praise for what you've already done. So at this time, as we get ready to sing, we're going to just continue to to sing about the great things that, Jesus, you have done. So we thank you for all this, and we commit this to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask you guys to stand for our last song.
This song has always been one of my favorites, and I don't necessarily know why. I think I fell into the trap of like, oh, it sounds so nice and so catchy. But I mean, that's not what it's about with worship music. It can sound nice and it can feel good, but what does it mean? Um, and I never really knew what does what does yes and amen mean. <laughs> uh, and I just read that it was based on First Corinthians uh, or Second Corinthians one one verse seventeen to twenty around there. And uh, I'm gonna paraphrase, so forgive me. <laughs> Go read it yourself if you want to know what it says. Uh, but Paul says. Um, God fulfilled his promises through Jesus with a resounding amen. And because of Jesus fulfilling those promises, our amen in return reaches the heavens, which is our yes as well. So God said yes with Jesus to all his promises and we say yes via our amen. So that's good. Now I can sing the song with peace. <laughs>
You can be seated just for a moment. We want you to leave being encouraged with that, that he is faithful. You can be confident in that today. John, thank you so much for your leadership on that and for leading us in that song. And you know, his, uh, his better half is still kind of playing some keys for us today. You can't tell because there's a piano hiding her, but it, I don't want to say that it takes a piano to hide. That's rude. <laughs> She's very pregnant. This is her last Sunday before we allow her to go on mat leave. And so uh, we love Blair. We love John. Don't we? And so we have just a small something for you that seems a- appropriate. And so, Kelsey, would you uh, do the honors, please, and thank you. You, you, you don't have to play anymore. That's, that's fine. At the end of this service, you're, you're off for a bit, so, so it's, all, it's all good. Uh, but, but we love John and Blair, and, and they have so many diapers, like more diapers than, than really hopefully is necessary. We'll pray that it's not necessary. They have so much stuff, but I know some of you still want to be able to, to help, and, and, and you certainly can. You're not required to, but if, if just out of the generosity that's overflowing in you, you, you certainly can uh, do things to help baby Nicole, but, uh, but we love you guys, and we thank you for uh, everything you've, you've already done. Uh, we're, we're praying for uh, a great arrival of, of baby Shimano is, is the current going name, I think, or something. No, I was just kidding. Um, it's a brand for like sprockets and parts for bikes and stuff. Anyway, it's inside, inside joke. I hope one day to be a part of one. But uh, we just want to pray for you before, uh, before we close this service. Can you even extend a hand to them right now? It's, it's for a really good thing. And so we're so excited for you guys in these coming uh, months. And so we're going to pray for you right now. We're just going to extend a hand. Father, thank you so much for the Nicoles. Uh, this is an exciting time for them. And, uh, and as, as a family here, uh, we love them so dearly. And so would they be blessed even right now? We thank you for your hand guiding them in this, and uh, we know you're faithful. And, and so uh, we're, we're just trusting for uh, the next uh, month to be, to be great for them and, and just exciting and that uh, we can all lend a hand when necessary and that we can drop off food or whatever is necessary or, or come lend a hand and... Um, and so we, we thank you for them. Pray that this would be uh, just, just an amazing time as their family is growing. And so would you bless them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Amen. So be blessed as you go and uh, be, be praying, be thinking of who you can be inviting in the coming weeks, uh, anticipating Easter being a, a really strong, life-changing weekend, anticipating that Alpha is going to be a great opportunity for us to, to, to work together and help people to, to hear the gospel and to see Jesus. Be blessed as you go.